Hello everyone. My name is Brian Loxton. I work for the Ohio Department of Transportation in the Office of Geotechnical Engineering. Today I want to go over how to use the Geotechnical Report VBA. The VBA extracts borehole location information from a GPK file and formats that data to be compatible with GINT. So let's get started. I have my GINT project database table open that I got from my staff at the test lab. It's mostly complete. They have all the sample information entered, all the lab testing data, all the material descriptions. What it's missing is the actual borehole location information, the stations, the offsets, the offset directions, and the northing and eastings. The file contains latitude and longitude coordinates and borehole elevations, but we consider that draft data. That data comes from OGE handheld GPS units. The drillers collect that information in the field. We do not have high-end GPS units. We know that this information is not very accurate and we would prefer not to use it. We would prefer to have actual surveyed boring locations. When we have actual surveyed boring locations, that data is entered into the database file last in the ODOT workflow. It's entered by the CAD operator, not the staff at the test lab. So let's go over into MicroStation now and we'll look at the VBA. So I have my survey base map file open. Let me go ahead and shut some of these levels off. As you can see, I've got a couple of project borings and some instrumented borings. It doesn't matter which DGN file you have open, the VBA reads from the GPK file. So you could open a blank microstation drawing and then launch GeoPack and then run the VBA. So let me go ahead and launch GeoPack. I have my GeoPack project already created. I'll just open that. And let's go look at the, the surveyed points. Coordinate geometry and the navigator. It's already set to points. I'm going to sort the table by feature code you must use an ODOT standard survey feature code. And I'll pull this down. Find my borings. There we go. Two project borings and four instrumented borings. We have the coordinates and the elevations. So I'll close all this up now. Don't need this anymore. And we'll launch the VBA. At the very top, under ODOT, in the ODOT pull-down menu, ODOT Geotechnical, Geotechnical Report. You get this dialog box. It's pretty straightforward. The question mark is, of course, the help key. You push that. You get a PDF document with some background information and some instructions on how to use the VBA. Eric Thomas from Eric Thomas Consulting under contract to the Office of CAD and Mapping wrote this VBA for us. The job number is just that. It's the GPK file. The VBA reads all of the chains in the GPK file, so you have to know which one is the center line chain, the chain that you want it to use to calculate the stations and the offsets from, you pick that off the pick list. You can give it the TIN file. You have that option. If the surveyors picked up the boring locations but did not survey the boring elevations, then you could give it the TIN file and the VBA will extract the elevations for the borings from the TIN file. Uh, and again, it read the GPK file, read the feature codes, in the GPK file and found 
soil project borings and instrumented soil borings. You can see that those they're checked on. They're not grayed out. It, the VBA did not find any target borings or any monitoring wells. So then you just give it a location for where you want to save the file to. It defaults to ODOT geotechnical report in a CSV file. I'm just going to leave it that way. Tell it generate. And then it gives you another dialog box when it's complete. Just tell it OK. And now we'll go over and look at the CSV file. So we'll go to Windows, chase the file down to where we saved it at. I'm going to go ahead and open that as a spreadsheet. I'm going to uncheck that, tell it OK. I'm going to take a moment and format my data. Auto fit. OK. Now we have the boring locations formatted the way that GIMP wants the data. We have the stations as a numeric value without the plus sign. We have the absolute value of the offsets and then the directions left and right. We have the elevations, the northing and easting values, the feature code, and the name of the chain that, that we picked off the pick list, the, the chain that was used to determine the stations and the offsets. What we don't have is the actual boring ID numbers. Sometimes the surveyors will use the boring ID numbers as the point numbers. Sometimes the surveyors will include the boring ID numbers as the descriptions. They didn't do either one in this case, and that's okay. So I had to go back and review the rest of my project documents, my proposed boring layout plan, and the base map, and figure out which one of these boings was which ones. So I'm just going to use the description field and put those boring ID numbers in there. You could add a whole other column if you wanted to. Uh, it's, it's up to you. But if you just give me a moment, I'll type those in. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and sort my data by boring number then. Description A to Z. So now there, there's, the data is sorted by boring ID number that will match my GINT table. I'm going to go ahead and move this column to the front. Again, just you don't have to just to match my GINT table. I'm going to move these to the end. I don't really need those. Okay, so now all we have to do is start cutting and pasting data out of the spreadsheet and into the GIMP file. Stations offset, offset directions. Go back, get my elevations. And one more time, we'll go back and get the northern and easting values. Paste those. I'm going to go ahead and give it uh, a reference alignment. Center line. And I'm going to save my data. Okay, I have one last thing to do. I need to take my northern and easting values and convert those to latitude and longitude and replace my draft values for latitude and longitude in my table. And GIMP will help me to do that. I'm going to go back over on my project tab 
and then up at the top under tables and coordinate fields I'm going to turn that on so when I checked that on Gint added three new data fields to my project tab coordinate system elevation offset and coordinate units so what we need to do is tell Gint what coordinate system my project was surveyed under so you go go to the end of the tab push the button you get this other dialog box I have all of the Ohio systems saved in my favorites folder I'm going to collapse that and show you how to chase those down the long way in case you don't have your favorites already set up under projected North American United States and down to Ohio and then my project is in the south zone so I'm going to find state plain south US feet I'm going to pick that one there's more data about each of those coordinate fields I'm going to pick this one tell it OK so it populated that data field leave the elevation offset blank drop down the coordinate units and again we're working in feet not meters then I can go back to my borehole tab you're going to get this dialog box just tell it yes slide out on to the end of the tab when I toggled on coordinate fields under tables it added these two new latitude and longitude fields to my data table and it auto populated those by converting these northing and easting values based on the coordinate system that we gave it on the project tab so now all I have to do is copy and paste those into these two latitude and longitude fields all of the ODOT reports reference these two data fields for boring locations the boring logs in the summary source test data table that's why I had to copy those values to these fields and save if you have a grid to ground converted project then you must put the grid values for northing and eastings in the Gantt table in order for it to calculate the correct latitude and longitude let's go back to our spreadsheet if you had a grid to ground converted project these would be the ground values so what you could do is you could put the scale factor down here someplace and then set up two new columns to convert these ground values back to the grid values then you could copy and paste these grid values back into the Gint table and then it would auto calculate the correct latitude and longitude that concludes my presentation on the G technical report VBA if you have any questions about that or any of the other geotechnical tools on the ODOT pull down menu in microstation or about Gint feel free to give me a call thank you